32. You covered what? 31. So you covered 21. I mean 31. Okay. Nice. Sort of salty stuff. <laughs> really, I had no. <laughs> 31, 31. No, that's just for me. I mean, just to remind it for everyone. I'm just asking what you did learn last time. Okay. So last time, what were the points? Last, yes. So there is no difference between Krishna and his incarnation. He expands himself for every single devotee in the form of Paramatma. So for the uh, purpose of exchange, there is there are multiple Krishnas, uh, and also in the narrated story of uh, Queen Satya from uh, Sri Bhagavatam that the seven raging bulls. So Krishna expanded. No, but that's what I was talking that last to last time. What was he talking about? Only he knows. <laughs> if Bolo. So it was we just discussed about like how Lord expands in the Paramatma nature. Okay, how Lord expands expand in Paramatma nature. So there were two past times. One was the Brahma Vimana Lila. Brahma Vimana Lila. So okay. How Krishna expands and okay. reveals. And then there is uh, the, uh, the Dwaraka Palace example how Krishna expands in 16,108 forms and Narad Muni comes and he sees in each and every palace. Okay, now I'm Krishna in every palace simultaneously. So that's like what's the difference between a mundane yogi and Krishna? Then we explain the Paramatma teaching, then discuss the Okay. So I'll just read the text 30, because what Krishna is pointing, just to come back a little bit. <clears throat> For one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I'm never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. <clears throat> So having that vision of seeing Krishna in everything, in everywhere. <clears throat> like there was Vamshidas Bhavaji Maharaj, it was very <clears throat> unique. <coughs> See, no salt, so it's like <clears throat> he was very unique in his character. And then he was living in Navadvip mostly. And whenever he would hear any word or anything, he would connect it to Krishna. So then somebody told him something about there was something bad, something was going on, and said something about government. Government. And then when he heard, he said, Oh, go over that, go over that. <laughs> so he was he would just see every Krishna everywhere or connect everything to Krishna. So forget about government. Oh, go over that. <laughs> so go over that. By the way, Govardhan Puja is coming very soon. Maybe one, two weeks. So <clears throat> That's why one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I'm never lost, nor is he ever lost to me. So he's always Krishna conscious, one who has that vision. And then he says, such a yogi who engages in the worshipable service of super soul, knowing that I'm a super soul, I'm super soul or one, remains always in me in all circumstances. So that's another point of not making any kind of distinctions. Who is Krishna? Who is super soul? Who is this other kind of expansion of Krishna is all one and the same. We're all one and the same. Like there was discussion between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Venkat Bhatta in South India. That's the way Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pacified him and just allow him to maintain his own path towards his worshipable deity, which was Lord Narayan. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu challenged, he said, how come your Lakshmi, just of all, the most chaste of all ladies, she's attracted to Krishna, she wants to enter Rasulila. How come? How come that is the case? And then Venkat Bhatta, he said, I don't know the answer. He admitted, he said, I don't know what the answer could be. He was the most, one of the most greatest scholars and most exalted devotees at that time. Because Chitni Mahabharata was pointing out that Krishna exhibits all the opulences and therefore Krishna is the Swayam Bhagavan. Anyway, that was a different discussion. But then he kind of reconciled later and said, Anyway, there is no difference. There's no difference. Lord Narayana and Krishna, they're all one and the same. So having that vision also, that's very important because otherwise we may become even very offensive and then uh, destroy our bhakti. Like yesterday we discussed Chaitanya Charitamrita. 
there was a, which was written by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. And today we heard, today it's his uh, disappearance day. So he had a brother. His brother had complete faith in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but not having any faith in Lord Nityananda. So then uh, there was one great devotee, Abhiram, Ram Das Abhiram. He was saying, you know, this is like a logic of a half hen. Yeah. You take the golden eggs, you take the back part, but you cut the head. You, you, you don't accept the front part. And what kind of, what is that? It's very inappropriate, very offensive. So he couldn't understand. He didn't have that mercy. He didn't have that that, that surrender. You know, of Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, practically they're not different. So he couldn't understand that. So how do you understand certain expansions of Krishna and how you don't make offenses towards others? <clears throat> so that requires proper purity, proper consciousness, appropriate purity and proper consciousness. <clears throat> so that's a vision of a yogi, Paramatma. Yeah. Krishna, there's no difference. There's no difference. Krishna responds. Agasuri. Krishna responds to whatever you know mood and bhav we do have. But at least that has to be appropriate devotional mood. So that's the yogi. He and he, what we discussed also, he engages in worshipable service. When you engage in service, you'll become pure. And you'll get the proper consciousness. And Krishna will give you the Dhammi Puri Yogam Tam. He'll give you the intelligence also to understand what you have to understand. Everything just by bhakti. Somehow or other engaging in bhakti, everything else will be uh, manifest. Everything else. As soon as you drop out from the bhakti, again, you know, covered by my ignorant, you know, lower stages of darkness. You know. So bhakti is our only hope. Even if you don't like it, we should do it out of duty. Everything starts love, you cannot expect love to last. It's not going to work unless you perform your duties. Oh, I love you. And then who will tolerate you? What's the use of your, your I love you? But do something, go and get money, work hard, do your duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So unless you sacrifice and do your duty, you know, perform your dharma, then you will get love and you will develop love also. <laughs> it's, that's, it's just, that's how it works. It really works like this. It's not just some lip service or something, some, some, I don't want to give certain adjectives now, but some feeling, you know, it's like, you know, it's <laughs> or some lust or whatever, you know. No, it, it's a duty. Everything develops from the sense of duty. And this is why Krishna is chastising Arjuna here in this Bible. <clears throat> you feel like this, you feel like that, you should. You think you should be doing things like this or like that, then that, what is the use? There's no use of any of this. And it won't last, and you won't get any benefit. You'll just degrade yourself. Better to do your duty imperfectly than someone else's perfectly. Why? Because then you're purifying yourself, and you're getting cre credit of the Dharma. And out of that Dharma, you'll get Artha, you'll get Kama, you'll get Moksha, you'll get Krishna Prema if the Dharma is directed towards Krishna. Better. That's how things work. <clears throat> and if you perform your duty or your Dharma, then you will develop love also. You can't develop love just out of nothing. No, it's by performance of duty. That's how you maintain the relationships. <clears throat> so it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. But then the affection will flow from that. So even if we don't love Krishna now, and we don't have attraction for, towards Krishna now, but at least we should understand, we should perform some bhakti, we should do something. We don't have taste for chanting now, but anyway, just keep on chanting, just do it. You know, like there was one disciple of Śrīla Prabhupāda, one of the early disciples, Gargamuni <coughs> And he said to Prabhupāda, Prabhupāda, I don't feel like bowing down. Prabhupāda said, just do it. Just do it, doesn't matter how you feel, just do it. You know, we don't feel so many things, I don't feel like it's, I don't, you know, feel, well, who cares about feelings are temporary, it's just mental state, manorata. You just do it, just do it, and then you'll feel like do it, doing it. You know, so we don't feel so many things in the beginning, but if you just do it, you'll develop at least habit. Do it out of duty, understand at least from intellectual point, something should be done, whether I like it or I don't. Rise above the mental platform. And then we'll start doing it. Then we'll have proper 
understanding, proper vision, proper knowledge, everything will follow if you engage in a worshipable service of Krishna. Krishna will give us everything. Okay, so today we have text 32, Atma Upamyena Salvatram Samam Pashyati Arjuna Sukham Yaya Divadukham Sayogi Paramo Matahal. Okay, I'll read the text and the purport. He is a perfect yogi who, by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings in both their happiness and their distress, O Arjuna. So this is this is this is the little uh, section here that where Krishna talks about yoga. Yoga means connection. Yoga means connection. So when one starts connecting to Krishna by following certain process, and then final conclusion, final before the completely final conclusion will be, oh Arjuna, be a yogi. Be a yogi, connect, follow, do some dharma, form certain activities in relationship to me. Be a yogi, be a yogi. And then out of all these kind of yogis, the best is the one, who renders devotional service. Krishna says, that's my opinion. Yeah. Because Krishna is the authority, ultimate one. So this is description now, who, are, who is the yogi or who are the yogis? And Krishna is praising, Krishna is emphasizing, this is, this is the process, this is good, this, this kind of conception, understanding, knowledge, that, that it's that it's uh, encouraging, <clears throat> and this is how things should be performed and done. So he says <clears throat> that he is a perfect yogi uh, who, by comparison to his own self, sees the true equality of all beings, both in happiness and their distress. So that's kind of like somebody who feels for others. I saw one news today. Oh, it's very, very sad news, very bad news. Just saw it. I didn't read the details, but it was like, there was some, some journalist who just found out that his whole family has been killed in Israel, you know. Al Jazeera journalist, whatever it doesn't matter. But I just, you know, just imagine how would you, how would you feel if your family is killed? No. How would you feel? His son and daughter and wife. That's pretty heavy. People don't think they just, they just go blinded by you know this madness of of, of, of war. Everybody just becomes mad practically. They don't understand. There are people. They have feelings. You know. It's, uh, you know, and it's not that everybody's at fault. We lose the discrimination. We lose, you know, we lose the sense. Maybe there are a few crazy fellows on both sides or whatever it is. Like in Kurukshetra also, there were demons on both sides. Whatever it is. But it's, it's not that everybody's, you know, <coughs> faulty or whatever it is. Yeah. At least we shouldn't be judgmental as such. Of course, how does karma manifest? That's another thing that we leave up to, you know. Krishna and those who administer that karma, demigods below him. But uh, but again, we should even if somebody is experiencing bad karma, then we shouldn't be happy about it. That's not the Vaishnava. That's not the Vaishnava. That's pretty. You know, it's like it's a really sad thing. Vaishnavas feel compassion. Vaishnava means one who is, who is mercy, who feels compassion. We are all here. Why are we here? We, we, we think we are all saints and we did wonderful things in the past and so many things. You no, know, we are all here because we are, we are very simple. <clears throat> so, but uh, when we ask for mercy, then somebody should see how simple we are. No, we are asking for mercy because hopefully we want to change. We, wanna, we don't want to experience this karma and we don't want to continue with this karma. Neither such activities which bring such a bad karma. No. So we are looking for some compassion. We are looking for some mercy. That's a pretty sad thing. You know? Something happens in life. It's, 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 so the devotee feels the pain of others. He feels pain of other living beings. 
That's a Vaishnava. That's a Vaishnava. It's not a demon that, that, you know, he's happy when others are sad. You know. That's a demoniac mentality. Devotee is Paraguka Duki. So he feels, he, he's, he sees true equality in all beings, in board, both their happiness and their distress. He's happy when everybody else is happy, and he's sad when everybody else is sad. So in the purple, Prabhupada points out, he said, one who is Krishna conscious is a perfect yogi. Yogi. He's aware of everyone's happiness and distress by dint of his own personal experience. <coughs> but that's another interesting point. Uh, that, uh, that a yogi is aware of someone's happiness and distress. And that, that, that's, that's interesting because, like you may say, we had this uh, famous Bollywood lady coming. She came today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, she came yesterday, okay. So you may think, wow, I don't know what you might think, it's so funny. You know, <laughs> <are> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so love, yeah. But from my, from my perspective, you know, it's, I, 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 you know, I would offer prayers for her, really. Such a, I don't know, is it anybody recording this class? No. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, it's like, it's such a horrible position to be in, no? Such a distressful position, such a, such a, uh, well, I, I don't know if I can go forward now. It's like, but not very, I would say like this, not very nice position, you know? <laughs> it's not, it's, not <coughs> it's, it's, uh, it's definitely not position to be in. It's not desirable position, but some, some, someone may think, oh, it's a very desirable position. Not at all. Not from a devotional point of view. Because how many reactions one receives? What is the state of one's mind in such an environment, in such dealings, and so many other things, you know? When one is intoxicated also, that's another breaking of the principles. You know? But it's intoxication by pride, intoxication by position, intoxication by control, intoxication by fame, intoxication, whatever. So many intoxicants. It's complete mind. It's complete mind. And actually, the more one is in such position, the more one, one is unhappy. So externally, it may look, you know, when somebody, you know, flounts out or something, wow, you know, this is very nice and very decent. But actually, in, internally, it's, it's such a miserable state. <clears throat> Such a miserable state. So devotee understands who is actually happy. He really understands who is happy and who is not happy, who is in distress. Devotee can immediately perceive that. It's, it, it's not judging just by the external show, so to say. He understands what's one's supposed to because he knows. He knows by the Shastra. He sees, he knows, you know, he has Shastra Chakshu. He has his eyes looking seeing with the eyes of knowledge and he also has experience the body has experience definitely has experience in life by dealing with so many other people and of course some, some certain personal experiences who, who is there in this world that can be happy yes you might be happy for a certain reason for a certain small amount of time but the rest of it is just great suffering so that's a devotee can perceive that like spiritual master, when you come in front of spiritual master, you may be bluffing spiritual master, yes, I'm great body, I'm so surrendered, I'm doing this and that. We immediately see what's your consciousness. You can read you like an open book, completely, you know, like uh, like, uh, like an X-ray <clears throat> machine scans you and yeah. sees, can't hide anything, and sees what, what's, what's your, what's real, real spiritual position. Many times it happens, so many, so many devotees, <clears throat> when Guru comes, they keep, oh, immediately jump here, do this, do that, you know, and the rest of the year, complete Maya, complete Maya. And they think, oh, Guru will see how uh, enthusiastic I am, this and that. And, say, <laughs> and they see, oh, hopeless people, what to do with them. Let's pray to Krishna somehow, some hope. <clears throat> So that's a, that's a perfect yogi. He's aware of everyone's happiness and distress by dint of his personal experience. The cause of distress of a living entity is forgetfulness of his relationship with God. 
And that's 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 the sum total of everything. Of our everything meaning our bondage in this material world. That's the different types of ignorance, but they all pretty much flow from this. Activity no Tucker explains, expands on this. But main 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 ignorance in this material world, you know, it's 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 that forgetfulness of Krishna. And then ignorance, I'm the body and other things. But main thing, it's forgetful of Krishna. This is why one of the major instructions in scriptures is what? What's the major instruction? Who knows in Shastra? What's the most important rule and principle to follow? Who knows this? What? No illicit sex? No, that's not, yeah. No. <laughs> what's, the, what's the most important rule and principle to follow? Wait a second, let me see. Okay, Mr. Guru Sadhu Shastra, wrong. Yes, we follow. It's correct, but not in this context I'm asking. Yes. Uh, we are sole part and parcel of Krishna. That's correct, but not in context I'm asking. <coughs> What's the most important? That is specifically said above all the rules and regulations. What a Sadhu Shastra, it's a principle kind of thing. It's a, that we do follow, but, but what are the rules and regulations? Like Yam Niyam. Huh? You know? No, no, no. I said that before. That's not a thing. Huh? Okay. See? That's the point. Satatan smarta vyo vishnu, vismarta vyo no jato chit sarva veda nisheda syur eta yo eva kinshara. Above all the rules and principles, and <coughs> the most important is never forget Krishna and always remember Krishna. Because even if you try to remember, you, there's a tendency to forget. So that never, both of, both of them are important. Both of them. So if, if we forget, then, then, then see, the cause of this stress is living entities' forgetfulness of his relationship with Krishna. So you don't know Krishna, you don't know your relationship. It's like you, you, you lose your relationship with your family. You stray away, you completely forget, and then you're then you're looking for another family or something. But you still have certain impressions or remember something, maybe, even if that is there or if it's not there. But then again, you won't be happy, you're lost. And you go from another, 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 or something, or you say, or it's like this. Better to give example also in different relationships. <coughs> you think this relationship will satisfy me, that relationship will satisfy me. You know, this girl is better than the other, and so and always just completely in Maya, just forgetful of real relationship with Krishna. That's what we are looking for. When you are looking for a relationship, you're really looking for Krishna. And none other will satisfy you. Not even to the slightest degree. And that's why always frustration and disappointment. But then why you keep on seeking for further relationships? Why you don't stop? Even after so many disappointments, why we continue seeking different relationships? Because it's our natural propensity. <laughs> Jiva always has a relationship with Krishna. <clears throat> Jiva always has a relationship with Krishna. Hey, now you touch me back before worship. Hey, hey. <clears throat> Little Vaishnava etiquette, we also have to learn. Uh, <clears throat> so, everything, every every suffering is some kind of derivation from this uh, this uh, ignorance. You also did the observance. <laughs> it's funny, no? I didn't see what you said. <laughs> <coughs> So every every distress that we experience in this world, it's because of this forgetfulness of our relationship with Krishna. That's all. That's all. Because you completely, <laughs> completely, <laughs> <stress. laughs> you completely stray away from uh, uh, from the point of the class, you know, and such things. <laughs> and such things are going on. <laughs> 
okay uh, from 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 your natural propensity from if your natural position and then you're lost then you're lost in bahu shaka anantashchaya and you're lost in this myriad of options of illusory energy and we are never happy and we are never satisfied until you know we, we we come across somebody who shows a little compassion upon us and that's a bison yeah. and we are so much in distress and so much so miserable and uh, then then hopefully then krishna may inspire some devotee and say go 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 speak to this nonsense fellow you know give him some give him some mercy give him some guidance and then, of course, by that time, you should be already softened a little bit, your hard heart of being so egoistic and so cruel and so exploitative towards others. And so whatever you do to, 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 to try to make up for that lost relationship with Krishna, you know, then when that softens a little bit by so many blows of Maya, then maybe some seed can be, you know, sown in that fertile, you know, heart then. Or softened heart, or or how do you when you till tilled heart, tilled heart when you till the heart like this, yeah. <clears throat> and then maybe we can recollect and start coming back to Krishna, reviving that relationship. So everything is this forgetfulness is actually the root cause of all the suffering. And then Prabhupada points out, and the cause of happiness, it's knowing Krishna to be supreme enjoyer of all activities of the human being, the proprietor. Uh, what is the shloka for this? I will read this. Who knows the shloka? Listen, listen carefully. And the cause of happiness, it's knowing Krishna to be supreme enjoyer of all activities of the human being, the proprietor of all lands and planets, and the sincerest friend of all living entities. Prabhupada is quoting the shloka. It's not mentioned here, but that's a shloka, very famous shloka. Okay. Give him some parvala uh, afterwards. <laughs> okay, good. <clears throat> so that's to know that that's a that's a peace formula verse. It said, if you know this, then you'll be peaceful. Then you can attain the peace. And when you have peace, then you can be happy. So the perfect yogi knows that the living being who is conditioned by the modes of material nature is subjected to threefold material miseries due to forgetfulness of his relationship with Krishna. So that's what happens when you are forgetting Krishna, then you have to come under jurisdiction of Maya. Washing hands, please. <coughs> Om Prakash, explain a little bit why this is important. Either you touch your nose, you touch your mouth. It's, I mean, it's not good, you know habit because then you touch shasta you touch java you'll forget about it and then it's all contaminated so when we have a proper consciousness if you can keep some standards of cleanliness like this then we'll have some we'll gain some knowledge we'll get some higher insight so cleanliness is next to good next to godliness no purity is very important because then from cleanliness actually purity develops purity of thought Purity means internal, cleanliness means external. So both have to be practiced. Well, how, what do we, how do we purify ourselves internally? Huh? By chanting. By chanting. And externally, by taking bath. But both affect each other also. So we have to maintain certain standards. Anyway. So, so yes, knowing this, then, yeah, okay. So Krishna says the modes of material nature is subjected to miseries. Because what means modes? Then you act in a different ways and you receive different reactions. And you can't get out of these miseries of material existence. Because by nature, body is full of troubles. By nature. Last week, how many troubles I had to undergo? I won't even tell you. I can't tell you even, you know, so many troubles, so many troubles, one, two, three, three at once, three at once. I had troubles with, uh, anyway, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> and then the worst one was, you know, I got this, I, I bit my tongue and it wasn't healing 
and then you get like you get ulcers also kind of stuff when the tongue is healing so it's kind of similar stuff and then that wasn't that was not healing for like four or five days and i couldn't taste and you can't eat because it's pain i couldn't sleep even i was waking up at night because when tongue comes here it's like like somebody it's like a thunder you know it just pinches you like when it touches the teeth you know it's like oh you know it's like and then so many other things you know it's like funny and the body is such a horrible horrible painful machine <clears throat> So you can't avoid that. Then mind, so many troubles by the mind. Who said something? Why did this happen? Why did this, that, this, you know? So many miseries imposed by the mind. Like the, liking this, no, disliking that. And of course, how do we stop, you know, pollution, <laughs> cold, heat, adidaibic, all kinds of other miseries. And then misery is caused by other living beings. That's imposed upon everyone who forgets about Krishna. Forget about Krishna, then you'll be subjected to all of those. And if you remember Krishna, if you're in the midst of those, when you're reviving your Krishna consciousness, you won't be as affected. What does it matter? Body, who cares? Mind, I'm not this mind. You know, and mind starts cooperating with you. Living beings, okay, let them do whatever they want. You know, it's all part of purification. And they're bringing me closer to Krishna. I have different consciousness then. And then, who cares? You know, like I just mentioned Ramshidas Babaji or Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami or something, or whatever. What was their consciousness? Or who, who else is the Raghunath Bhatta, Raghunath Das Goswami today also disappears? Such a great, you know, Goswamis, great souls. I mean, maybe, of course, now there's not much time. But they lived an extraordinary life, so which, which we can't even imagine practically how Krishna conscious they were. You know, like Raghunath Das Goswami chanting on the banks of Radhakund, that time it was jungle and tigers coming, and you know, it was just completely oblivious. And Rukha Goswami or Sanatan, who was somebody, they had to tell him, please make some little hut because this is you know, Sanatan. <clears throat> completely oblivious, just didn't, didn't you know. Was being Krishna conscious, and of course, nothing would be, nothing would happen to him because Sanatan Goswami saw Krishna standing nearby and observing what's going on. He's pure Krishna conscious. Krishna is taking care, but of course, that was Sanatan's point. You can't take this for granted. You can't use Krishna as your servant. That's also not good. So Raghunanda Goswami immediately made a hut. He chanted in the hut. <clears throat> So when we forget Krishna, then we are subjected to all these miseries, and then we'll be, you know, we'll be feeling the pains of those miseries. But if we are Krishna conscious, then we see such exalted living souls that they were not, they were not uh, affected by it in any way. So big difference. So, and because one in Krishna consciousness is happy, he tries to distribute the knowledge of Krishna everywhere. So we, you can see how, how you're advanced in Krishna consciousness. Do you want to give this knowledge to others or not? So if you are really tasting Krishna, then you'll be eager to give this Krishna to everybody else. And we, we will see that after one month, marathon is starting, book distribution. How much we are eager to give some books out? How much we are eager to give this knowledge to people, inspire them? Because many people do have, but they also don't take advantage. So, devotee is so happy that he can't tolerate, you know, seeing people being in such ignorance and suffering. And he'll do everything. You know, what did Prabhupada do to come to the best in the world, you know, and, and, and how much suffering? <clears throat> He'll do anything and everything practically to try to enlighten those who are ready for enlightenment. At least ready to accept something and follow something. But even then, the body will instruct and keep, you know, detached. But at least he'll give them information. He'll give them good advice. Since the perfect yogi tries to broadcast the importance of becoming Krishna conscious, he is the best philanthropist in the world. 
If we want to benefit someone, that's the best thing to do. <clears throat> Give the knowledge of Krishna consciousness. And he is the dearest servitor of Lord, of the Lord. In other words, a devotee of the Lord always looks to the welfare of all living entities. And in this way, he's factually the friend of everyone. <coughs> so that's a real friendship. Not let's go to the bar and get drunk together. Or let's go, you know, do something, some other nonsense or whatever. That's not real friendship. Like who was giving class? Um, how in the how in the college? Somebody who is apparently your friend, it's actually distracting you from your studies. Who was giving that class? Shobia or someone? IIT or somewhere? Somebody was saying. Somebody was sharing this. So, 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 some, some activities such as the done on the purpose, you know, <laughs> in the name of so-called friendship. And then you miss what you're really supposed to do. So everybody in this world is actually, actually distracting us from what we are supposed to do. Being Krishna conscious. So that's not friendship at all. What kind of friendship is this that you have to take another birth? What kind of friendship is that? What kind of friendship is that that you remain bound by the modes of material nature and exposed to these miseries of material existence? What kind of friendship is that? <laughs> like I know when I when I came to I came for the first program. Because I, I read a book like three, four years ago. I received the book and I couldn't find devotees and I didn't know about devotees. Uh, I just read a book and and, and and sometimes I'm a mumble something, Hare Krishna, I didn't know that. But I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know anything. And I couldn't read that Sanskrit, you know, this Krishna with dots. I had never seen this one of days, you know. Like, anyway, I was I was still in secondary <coughs> secondary school and uh, and then finally I saw one and then anyway I, I, I there was one fellow who was associating with a group of people that I associated also with and then he told me that he met some some someone like oh this had some somehow I don't know how it came to this topic because I was asking everybody you know something about Krishna or something like this. So, so he said, well, I went to one program. I missed it. I don't know what happened. I was in my hometown. And he said, wow, these people, you know, they, you know, I took one sweet bowl. That was simply wonderful. There is mix of, it's a, from the milk powder and sugar. And it's, it's, it's a very, it can be, you know, you put some butter inside, creamy stuff, you know, like very, it can be very soft and it just blows your mind. It's like really amazing. That's what Prabhupada called it, simply wonderful. You know? Prabhupada named it like this. And you put, and I think with the coconut outside, we just, uh, you know, throw it in a coconut powder. So he got that and he took just one. And he said, wow, and then I didn't eat the whole day anything. It was so powerful, something like this. You know? And I thought maybe, well, you know, you got drunk or something. <laughs> 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 but then I missed that program. So so then I was thinking, okay, what to do? And then and then only again after a few months, <coughs> then I saw one poster. There was one program, and the devotees couldn't get any other place. Then they organized program in one bar, when nobody was there at that time. Kind of Sunday, uh, not evening exactly, but late afternoon. So the devotees said. It's, some lady was on her, she gave them some space, okay, we can have a program here. <laughs> <coughs> so, so, I, I, so I came to that bar, you know, found it. And, I, and then so, some, my so-called friend, one another fellow, he said, I'm going with you. I said, okay, you come. Yeah. And then he came and then we were sitting like this, and the program was going on. Whatever, first bhajan, I was like, yeah. Listens to that stuff. You know, what's this? <laughs> Some Indian and funny. And then, okay, some lecture. 
I remember some points anyway, once speaking them out, it was little utopia, some philosophy. It wasn't overly philosophical, but was, okay, something. And then during the class, that friend of mine said, okay, let's get out of here, you know, this is, you know, this is boring, this is like, what is this, you know, so let's go. And I said, forget it, you know, I came here, you know, I, I, want, I, want to, I will attend the whole program, you know, I'm waiting for this for months, years or something, I'm not going. And then he was like, kind of, you know, cool down. And after some time, again, he said, come on, let's go, you know, let's sit. Uh, like three times he tried to, you know, he tried to pull me out. But I wasn't. I, I just didn't care, really. I was like, <coughs> I was fixed. I was fixed. And I want to I see what is this. I want to find out what, you know, what's going on here. And then he said, I'm going. I said, you go. Okay. <laughs> and he left. And I stayed. And he was a funny character anyway. And he left. So, the, and then I stayed, and then I got simply wonderful at the end. That's, also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's easier to make, you know, than what it said. And then I know, I, I remember, like, I got a whole bunch of them. And I said, wow, what is that given? <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. I just knew, you know, that was it. And from that time, I was regular. Every program, of course, it was when assembly else, they got some other place. They rented some place this time, they had a center. <clears throat> so what is friendship? You know, what is friendship? Is that a friendship you come to do? Finally, you, you, you try to revive your relationship with Krishna, and then somebody in the name of friendship pulls you away from Krishna? Is that a friendship? How many times it happens? How many times it happens you come to some home, and the man is like, yes, yes, I want to buy this book, and the wife just... Ever heard that? Yeah. Yes. Something like this, you know. <laughs> or the other way around also. Or once we had in Gadar, my God, it was a whole scene, you know. My, what the whole scene one one woman made, you know. We were just in City of the Night, we were giving books, and it was like, she was like, and she blasphemed that fellow, and all kinds of this, and then we were like, what's going on? And I was like, <laughs> in public, you know. <laughs> <laughs> heavy, heavy, heavy. Anyway, but there were even worse things. There was one there. There was one boy from Australia. He came with his girlfriend and ended up in Marvel. And uh, Kanama Kanamara was giving class or something, and then it <laughs> was a heavy case. And then he started becoming, you know, interested in philosophy. And then she couldn't get it. Yeah, she wasn't so. And then she understood, you know, I'm losing this fellow, I'm losing control over this fellow. It's becoming interested in, in Krishna consciousness. And then she was also trying to pull him away during the class. During the class. And this fellow was, no, no, let me hear you. I want to hear. And then she said, if you don't get up right now, you won't have sex with me this night. And unfortunate fellow, he stood up and left the class. Heavy. Heavy, heavy, heavy. So what kind of friendship is that? Ignorance, it's about what to do. Lust and ignorance. Um, but that's why we have to be, we have to have some character, we have to have some understanding, we have to have some knowledge, we have to have some values. We have to understand what the real values of life are. And then even if you're tempted and tested by mind, which, whichever way or someone else's ignorance, but then you should remain firm and steady in, in your Krishna consciousness. At least that much is expected. Then that's that's the one who the yogi is. <clears throat> so devotee always looks to the welfare of all living entities. That's is the actually the real thing. Because that's another point. Like we know that famous story. What is the use of supplying someone with any kind of benefits, this and that, if he's still lost as an amnesia? Yeah. Of his real position, which is secure and wealthy background and this and that, but he is loitering and suffering on the street. So the real welfare is bringing back someone back home, back home, back to Godhead. That's what devotees do. So he's the best yogi because he does not desire perfection in yoga for his personal benefit. That's another very important thing. Prabhupada brings up. You know, he, you know, why are we only here for ourselves? 
Well, mostly we are. We suffer and we want to get rid of suffering. But but that's not really what the yogi. Later on, we, we understand, hopefully, by some purification and some advancement. It's not, we're not just here for ourselves. We try to sacrifice for others. <clears throat> But, yeah, he tries for others also. He does not envy his fellow living entities. That's another big one. Real yogi doesn't envy others. What is there to envy? What is there to envy? You know, if you envy this lady which we talked about in the beginning, let's say you transform her into, let's say you envy some, some, somebody who is in a very famous position, some actor. Some sports, I don't know how is India doing now in cricket. Still it's going on? Yeah. That's World Cup or something? Yeah. So still it's happening? Yeah, they didn't fall out? They're still they have <laughs> <laughs> Huh? Yeah, in courtrooms they have big TV and they should Anyway, be courtrooms, big TV. Now I'm asking how they're doing, you know. They're doing well. So far. So far, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Anu, I'll talk to you later on. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was just, I was just checking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, let's come back to the point. So, wh why would the devotee or yogi envy someone? Someone like this, because those positions are full of pain and suffering, even though sometimes you may be, you know, famous and this and that. Why would you want such a position? It's really, it's kind of interesting. I remember, I mean, when I started with Krishna consciousness, and I also had desires like maybe be something this, something that, recognition, some kind of, you, later on, you just, this is, all, this, is my, this is all poison, actually. This is all poison. Why would you want anything like this? And what is envy? Envy is a poison. Envy is a poison. Why would you want any such kind of crazy position? So much suffering. Okay, you get some recognition, you get some little fame, you get something. And that all fades anyway very soon. It doesn't last. Then what you're left with? And you wasted your life for nothing? You, didn't, you have not been Krishna conscious, then you're born like a dog again or something and chasing the ball again on the... What is the use? What, 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 where's the question of ending? That's why we feel, devotee feels pity towards such living beings who are such in Maya. They, till the, they think they'll gain something by some name, fame, glory. That that's the goal of life. Devotee feels pity for such people who are in complete ignorance, thinking this will make them happy. Just as I said, it makes them more miserable. Because the more you're intoxicated, the, the, the more miserable you are. It's simple as that. So the more the fame, more misery. More the wealth, more misery. More the false ego, more the misery. What is there to be envy about that? And devotee so he has nothing, but he has Krishna. He's so happy. So why would devotee be, you know, envious? Here is a contrast between a pure devotee of the Lord and a yogi interested only in his personal elevation. Okay, that's another subject. The yogi who is withdrawn to a secluded place in order to meditate perfectly may not be as perfect as a devotee who is trying <coughs> his best to turn every man towards Krishna consciousness. So that's another thing, practicing something for personal benefit and then practicing something for benefiting others. Because when you benefit others, that, that's how you really personally benefit even more. So that's greater and that's better. And it includes the other. You also progress. You also advance in spiritual life. I remember that there was the interview with that one yogi in Himalayas, very famous fellow, uh, some, some, I forgot his name. But uh, so then they asked him, wow, you achieved so much on your spiritual plane and this, whatever. And so, you know, so why don't you share this? Why don't you give, you know, I said, then, then he gave like the analogy. He said, you know, if, if somebody is thirsty, he will go to the river. You know? 
now the driver comes to him or something like this. So it sounded like, wow, very, uh, very, very eloquent, you know, phrase. You know, but just imagine what would happen, you know, if, if Prabhupada wouldn't have taken so much trouble and if devotees don't make so much trouble, where would we be? How would we know? How would we ever figure anything out? Like we were talking today, how would, if devotee doesn't show, devotee's rec devotee recognizes that you're nonsense and you're suffering like a dog and he tries to help you. If that wouldn't be the case, but then where would you ever even realize that you're not happy and then you're suffering? You, 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 you wouldn't even realize that. <laughs> That's even the best thing. You would still, you know, you know, tread the mill, you know, tread the water in the same place, doing same nonsense things, having go, undergoing same suffering. Where, where is the question of you even coming maybe somewhere for looking for some help? Like even people come to temple, but still they don't, they don't really get a help. They don't want help. But it's after some time, you know, hopefully sometimes it does click, you know, sometimes some purification happens. Or at least some devotee comes and then, you know, doesn't please come for some program or something. You know. Without mercy of the devotees, that's why devotee is greater than a yogi. <coughs> He's just interested in personal benefit. But even, even yogi is fine. But still, the devotee's position, like I said, is a conclusion of this chapter. Krishna allows that it's much greater, and it makes Krishna way more happier. Okay, we are out of time. Hare Krishna. Any comments or questions? How after, after, after now, and we conclude. There's no time. We will end up. Okay, come yeah, uh, on. Do you want to advertise your announcement? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no. He became a lawyer now, so you know he says anybody needs anything. You know, okay. No, I, I, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Anybody has civil issues or criminal issues? Just <laughs> come <laughs> 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 no, actually, uh, so we have registration week uh, like coming. Okay, but why we have to do this? So, so, so we can actually realize this position. We can share our experience and we can give cards. Okay, okay. why don't you? You know. Wait. Yes, so that's what I want. Yes. 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 Sorry. Uh, so. Experience. So, so everyone has some personal experience. I think in the meeting, everyone is pretty experienced. Like Rahul Prabhu is experienced. And uh, so many people are experienced. So they can come and share their experience. And. Uh, they just Prabhu. So we have uh, cards. We have cards with us, and uh, they can take out their one hour, two hour, or they can give ho however voluntarily, and they can uh, give this, really? and they what can realize. What happened to you? See what the preacher he became. You know, it's pushing everybody more. Uh, so yes, yeah, so 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 they can then realize, you know, that this uh, because because here also Prabhupada writes that uh, this this pro the we, we don't only have to you know. Give this to ourselves. We, we should give it to others, uh, like it here in the purpose. Yeah, so yes, uh, that, that is the greater uh, opportunity we are getting. So I hope everyone uh, <coughs> will come also for that. Okay. Prozi will come. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Finish. There is one more comment, Prozi. There is one comment. <laughs> actually, uh, this, uh, actually th that that is a uh, tweet. Uh, that a girl tweets that uh, met a very cute guy yesterday on the metro, and I thought I was gonna have uh, some romantic. Anyways, so only to find out he was reading the Bhagavad Gita on his phone. So, so she, 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 according to her, it is very uncool to read Bhagavad Gita, so and see, she she made that. He was like, saved. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita saved him. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going.